Everything's up for grabs. Everything seems possible, and I think it's, it's the time to lean into oblivion, lean into this moment. No matter how strange it gets, no matter how chaotic it gets, no matter how um, worrisome and, 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 and troublesome it, it can be, that we lean into it and be in, in this moment and in, in this time. Uh, yeah, it's a very weird situation. My eldest daughter said to me the other day, she said, Mum, it's a bit like, you know, like when on telly they do these like very randomly and occasionally they do these weird little pretend scenarios like oh what mm-hmm. would it what would happen if if this in is the only event, a test a situation, and then they actually get all the people like the newsreaders and stuff involved and as if it was a real thing and she said I keep yeah. having to sort of remind myself that this is actually real it's oh, like yeah, it's, actually it's not like a pretend thing it's actually happening it's not like a pretend sort of let's have a bit of fun and, and we'll get everybody involved on the telly as if it was really happening International Emergency Alert System from the Civil Authorities of USA, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Macau, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Singapore, Thailand, China issued an international letter contagiously containment breach of the Kanora virus. This is not a drill. International Emergency Alert System from the Civil Authorities of USA, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Macau, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Singapore, Thailand, China issued an international level contagiously containment breach of the Quinoa virus. This is not a drill. A few years back, we've got this soap in, 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 in this country called Coronation Street. And there was a character and people get so into the characters that they actually believe that they're real. So, you know, like um, evil characters on the soap get death threats and abuse, you know, <laughs> things like that, 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 like they're a real, you know, they really are that character. Well, years ago, this character, she got put in prison. She got basically framed for, for something and got put in prison for fraud. And she didn't do it. Well, obviously her character did. And basically everybody got really sort of, obsessed with getting her to be freed from the prison and there was this massive thing like all all the the news readers and stuff in the UK were like doing like actual news stories on this character in Coronation Street like it was a real thing so like the reality of like whether it was real or soap opera really merging and people were starting to forget that she was just a character they did it for a bit of a joke and thought it'd be a bit of a laugh to sort of you know keep this story going (laughs) But it, that story made me think, well, this is kind of like, you know, for a lot of people, I think that's, it's still really sinking in that, that that this is the really weird, surreal situation that all these countries are locked down, the schools have been locked down, you know, and all this really weird stuff going on. And I just think it's just too much for some people. They just can't. To me, it really shows up the programming of society that, now something that's happened that is completely outside of the programming, people's brains can't compute. They they cannot get away from the previous programming. Do you get what I'm saying? It's really weird. It's yeah. Weird. I mean, there's there's so many layers and so many different things to this. I've kind of been like mentioning this to in a roundabout way to Rose, but in a more formulated way, I've been um, playing around with this this thing. Uh, you know, like that meme that I put out with uh, Terrence McKenna. If you can't go outside, go within. Lean into the b- oblivion. But before that, I was I was playing with this stuff. Is like, are you all right in your own skin? Have you passed the acid test? So I, I might just leave it as test. Lean into oblivion. And it's like this thing. You know, we 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 go around life so caught up in the past or the future, all these labels and titles, oh, this is my job, this is what I do, and then you kind of like go in automatic mode and you, you do all this kind of stuff. And um, kind of like hiding your yourself is, 
your true like inner self is kind of hidden by this whole masquerade that we all kind of uh, like buy into to a certain degree or not. And then now it's like the music turned off and no one knows what to do. And um, it's funny to see like it is in, in one respect, this whole context of, of this pandemic, right? And it's awful that these uh, pe- that there's a, a new virus that we really don't know how to to treat, and that we really don't know what are the repercussions and exactly how it's affecting us. All we know is it's spreading really fast, and it's it could really turn into something. It's already kind of turning society on its head, but at the same time, it has woken up in this way to to force us to be like okay let's just put everything on pause and that and that we could do that in like an instant and like like here it it happened so fast like california literally just like, like one day said like oh people shouldn't be out uh you should really stay in your homes and then like the next day is like no one should be out you should only go out for essential stuff and then when you think about it, like, what are these essential stuff that we need to do? We need a, we need food. We need stuff to, like, clean ourselves. Then And that's it. And, like, we just stay home. And it's, like, we're supposed to be in lockdown for, like, three, 30 days for, like, a month. And it's so funny because I think this is, like, after we get off the, the this initial anticipation, I think this this could have the opportunity to, not for everybody not but for like most of, to like lean into a, to this oblivion it, it can be something really interesting and exciting in a sense that we should naturally if we had a healthy environment and society we would for like a month out of the year press pause like a true holiday not like what we do our holidays are all about like consuming and then we like sometimes even go so overboard that we work more on our days off than we do with work but like truly just being and focusing on not only like our physical health right here we're worried about our physical health but then knowing that it's all tied up into into our emotions into into what truly kind of makes what 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 is it that's interesting like there's there's no sports to like distract us. There is soon probably going to be no more new episodes of of TV shows. So like it's yeah. just like it's like what what do you do? Like sometimes it's so interesting. Game wars. Yeah, I always but... find it like funny that that people get their definition of a holiday is that is actually a load of stress, massive yeah. stress, you know. It's like, oh my God, I got to do this. I got to make this blah, blah, blah. I've got the passports or the travel. Oh, I got to go like, go go like and then go they go somewhere else. Wrestle someone in the stores to buy <laughs> Yeah, eat loads, of, eat loads of fucking shit and food on their holiday. Yeah. Lie by a pool in another area of the world. And then after about a week or two weeks, they do all the stressful traveling and then they've got to recover from the holiday. Yeah. It's like, it's complete madness. But like you're saying, Dan, it's like, this is the, this could be the death. This could be like the real holiday, the period of introspection that, that people need to have the, the true definition of a holiday almost. Yeah. <laughs> reality, <laughs> actual physical reality in a form of this virus is forcing us to collectively say, whoa, we need to chill out. <laughs> like, we just need to press pause and, like, reevaluate what's going on because there's something massively wrong right now going on. <laughs> but the- I feel like people are doing that. I feel like they're just, you know, sitting at home complaining and, and no, no, no. reading I- memes. I totally, I totally, I think that is the initial 
reaction and like me well, maybe they need time to do that and get it out of their system before yeah, they can move on and and be productive yeah that's, that's the that's, same thing with that's the whole point of like universal basic income yeah, is that you yeah. know at first people are going to be lazy as fuck and not want to do anything and you know whatever and not be productive members of society in addition to that that check but eventually they're gonna go huh there's gotta be something i can do that i'll actually enjoy you know, and yeah. that's when all the artists and the, the other things are going to start showing up, you know, and then people will realize, hey, you know, I really like doing this kind of art. I didn't know I could make cabinets with it or whatever. There are ways to use your, your creative energy to have a career. Yeah, I, we're moving more and more towards this. And this is just like a weird acid test for it. Because like, yeah, I, yeah. like what, what I was saying in the beginning is like, even me, who like, almost for the past two years have been like living this way for a while <laughs> even me when it happened i initially had this like things were just not like i even even my headspace now is is not totally in a creative headspace i'm, I'm getting there like i'm pushing myself out of this uh anxiety and and, and anticipation much more like everybody else is like kind of just waiting around like what the fuck now I'm pushing myself into it. But, you know, it's initially, too, like, I remember getting people stoned when they don't really get stoned. And they just start, like, chatting about, like, all sorts of different things. And I'm just like, dude, just relax. Just enjoy it. Like, just be. Like, this is, listen to the music. Watch what we're watching. Like, just be here. Like, I remember one time my friend was freaking out on, on shrooms, right? It was in the initial beginning and I could just feel him being like all freaking out. And I go sit next to him and like, hey, what's up, Gabriel? Like, you're um, being distant from everybody. Are you okay? I just want to make sure everything's good with you. And he's just like, oh, nah. It's like, I'm worried. And then he starts like mentioning about his like mom and then like his sister and then all this kind of stuff and all this family drama. And then um him about like getting in a career and all this kind of stuff and so, he, so i just listened to him tell me and he's just like going a mile a minute like well blah, 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 all this kind of stuff that he's worried about and i'm like okay i'm just gonna let you know that you right now are in monterey park while everybody is here in san diego on a private beach we just took and ate the mushrooms you're here with your closest friends in the whole entire world one in the most beautiful places on earth but yet, you're over there in Monterey Park. You're worrying about something that happened in the past or something that might happen in the future. You can't do anything about that right now. Yeah, later when we get back, handle your shit. You know, get right with, with your parents if it's really, like, you know, giving you this anxiety or, you know, have a heart hurt your sister or stop being an asshole or whatever it is. Figure it out then. But for right now, you should be here with the us. And enjoying this moment. And then worry about it when we get back over there. And deal, deal not even worry about it. Just deal with it. And I think if people allow themselves to experience this moment. Yes, there's a lot of anxiety and stuff. Like here at my house, my sister's sick. And she's, she's sick. She went to the doctor. And it's kind of funny, too. She's like, she was living in the East Coast, and she just decided to come back home and stay here for good. And so she, like, quit her job over there. So she's in between jobs. And, like, she doesn't really have uh, health coverage right now. And then so it's just, like, this whole kind of weird swirl that that's happening with her right now. And we're kind of, like, she's kind of in her own quarantine in room and we're uh, you know i'm like cooking for her and like we're all kind of pitching to help her out and she's basically staying in a room so th i mean this is not to say that i'm ignoring what the actual reality is it's like literally hitting in my house right now but at the same time you know we deal with it in this moment whatever's going on at this time but also to realizing what really matters what what really brings us joy happiness like 
true fulfillment, which is a mixture of pain, a mixture of anxiety, but also to feeling good that I could bring a little bit of comfort and nutrition to my sister who's who's sick right now and we're not totally sure what's going on because everything's all fucked up right now. That was a shit show to try to get her to see a doctor, a shit show to try to get her tested. And they're, they're even like, things are so weird right now here in LA that they decided that they're so behind the ball that they're not even going to test unless you're like in the hospital and you're like in critical condition. But if you just have initial effects, they're not going to waste their time doing that because they need to prioritize because they see this whole like cascade coming, which I totally understand, but it's also too, holy shit, you know? But at the same time, it's it's interesting to get over this initial like, okay, this is happening, this is real, but that that doesn't mean. I mean, it puts it puts things in perspective. Like what really? And I, and I like I said, I've I've done this to my own self, self-imposed, uh, reevaluating what I really want out of life. And none of that has to do with, at least for me, quote unquote, a job or her career or whatever, only in a loose sense. And um, it just, if people allow themselves to have this moment and it, it doesn't even have to be this like grandiose, like philosophical, introspective thing. It could just be like, let me just stop and breathe, enjoy some food, some quiet time, read a book, really listen to music, whatever it is, even if it's, it doesn't even matter. There's, there's so array of things. And yeah, I think after a while, some of this initial kind of stuff that we used to distract us, uh, will kind of get a little old and there's going to be like things that we look for and we, and we're, we, we could, and I think that's like a moment to to like leverage leverage within our own selves, but then also to see if we can leverage that with other people. And um, even beyond this moment, that's just how I want to or- orientate my own life to leverage uh, moments of like you know I just reach out to a couple of people, and then whenever something happens, I leverage it a kind of. I don't, even, I don't even think leveraging is the right word, but, you know, just creating moments and time and, like, even even just me, like, um, looking at this challenge and thinking about it, telling Rose a little bit, like, I find it interesting to use my skills as a cook to be, okay, how do I use everything I have right now if I truly cannot go out for 30 days and like, let me prep things. Let me like have things easier for me because you know, I, uh, I have like stock that's frozen. I have like all this kind of like coordinating, uh, using the fresh veggies that I have right now and not like wasting everything which means also that I have to like freeze things, which I don't particularly, but, and like, what, what if I get sick and then the the family needs to eat and I shouldn't be really cooking everything. So like, let me like make sure there's enough variety of meals in the fridge freezer for like two weeks or whatever. Like I think we're at like two weeks and then we could like survive the next week. If, if that, but, um, you know, just using this, like, okay, like, let me make my prep list. Let me have my oh shit backups. It's like, oh yeah, let me let me do these little things. Let me let me take uh, do inventory and see what's up. But you know, it's no one knows what's what's going to happen. And I think also to to get like so sucked in, like it is so right now that the, the this, there's this weird. Um, narrative or agenda
Honestly, I would be lying if I said I wasn't worried about the coming virus. I am. Just like many of you, I am freaked out. But I'll be damned if I'm going to let television determine my relationship to this thing. We are not spectators of the COVID show, but participants. This is a moment that we need to leverage the very best of our emerging digital sensibilities and capabilities. The less we fixate on images designed to distract, hypnotize, or trigger us, the more we invite our agency to the fore. And this is how we, as a society, develop the cultural immune response required to face such a challenge together. And that, that all of this is a house of cards. Like, it's so it's so weird that if we all just collectively decide not to play in this economic game and we just, like, stop, that's it. <laughs> like, we're literally doing that right now. And, like, we could, like uh, Abeg was saying, we could barter within ourselves. We could reorganize ourselves to just deal locally and to interact with our loved ones and even our imaginary friends. And it's so funny because I think, and I, I'm already seeing it, but I, I have yet to really see anybody the way I think it can be done. And it's interesting that all this kind of crazy stuff that I've been trying to do puts me in this weird nexus to be able to start to sh- shift things in this way. And like what me and Meg were talking about, I think it was earlier today, that you never really notice. And it's, it's funny because things that accelerated so much that now you could see this whole like shift and change in almost in real time. It's almost like rendering in real time, but it, most of the time you don't see how the course of your own life changes until like afterwards, like, Oh, that bad relationship made all this like series of events to make me go into this path or I, me arbitrarily choosing this made me realize something that made me choose that. Like if, if I decided, you know, like to stay in school and then get married to my girlfriend at the time, then like my whole life would have been different. But me making that decision of like, doing that changed my whole course to this side. I would have been a whole different other person that time, or I would have been done this and that. And I think this is like uh, a chance to like really prototype, you know, this future work, like what we've been doing and, and everything, it, it just stopped. And just one day we just said, okay, we're just going to put this on pause And I think if we use this time to think, like, I've already kind of done this with my own self, but, like, other people to, like, think, you know what, let's be a little bit more self-sufficient. Let's be a little bit more aware of our own health. Let's, oh, we could use the internet to have, to create things, to actually have things that are are more uh, culturally, spiritually nutritious instead of just kind of consuming mindless advertisements you mean we we could use this in a way to form each other directly but not only just to form each other directly have have fun and and create and 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 get to this this space and you know i've been slowly introducing what we did with the minds um uh, poetry group into like facebook and like kind of like slowly focusing my magic to see if I could like send these digital messages in a bottle out there to interact with anybody lost and finding any of the others on uh, Facebook that want to play. <laughs> and I mentioned this to Rose, but the whole thing with, with, du- uh, with Douglas Rushkoff and it's so weird. Everything's up for grabs. Everything seems possible, and I think it's, it's the time to lean into oblivion, lean into this moment, 
no matter how strange it gets, no matter how chaotic it gets, no matter how um, worrisome and, 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 and troublesome it, it can be, that we lean into it and be in, in this moment and in, in this time, that yeah, I think I, I almost... Like a hundred percent believe in this, even prior to this moment, that if you're all right in your own skin, then it doesn't matter at all what is happening around you. And then that you will be able to have like this full faith in your own will and your own being to be able to handle anything that comes. And that that means being fully in and aware of yourself and, and everything going around and it's a weird um balance and, and thing but that's like that in my own mind however naive it may be but i think that's the actual work that that is to be done in our brief moment in, in this version of reality